To shoot a project the size of Napoleon really is, in many ways, like a military campaign. Six, seven. In certain occasions, we're going to have to operate like a huge army invading a country. Action! It was complicated and difficult, but I loved it because it's a challenge. Presents the making of Napoleon. On the battlefield, he was undefeated. The men say you risked your life like an ordinary soldier. They call you the little corporal. In his arms, she was defenseless. I plan to come back to me. I can't live without you. They shared a love that seemed invincible until war Fire! tore them apart. Repudiate the Empress Josephine. Marry the Archduchess of Austria. You take care of France, and I'll take care of your divorce. You don't love me. It's all over between us. Fiverr. John Malkovich, Gerard Depardieu, Isabella Rossellini, and Christian Clavier. In an A&E original movie, the story of one man who wanted to rule the world, the woman who ruled his heart, and the empire that came between them. This movie is the story of Napoleon as it has never been told. You should be able to discover a very different Napoleon than the one you think you know. I have other plans. Oh, do tell me. I'll be as silent as the grave. I hope to be elected to the Institute in the domain of physical science and mathematics. Napoleon was an epic production in every conceivable way. An eight-month shooting schedule, hundreds of speaking roles, thousands of extras shot all over Europe, in Canada, at, actually at St. Helena. So it was really a global production with an enormous cast. It was a huge undertaking. Action. Shot in both French and English over a period of five months, the film follows Napoleon from his youth spent at a military academy to his exile on the island of St. Helena. In the coming minutes, we'll introduce you to the special effects coordinators, stuntmen, and makeup artists who work behind the scenes. But first, meet the actors who brought a legend to life on screen. We wanted to be inside of the human being. I mean, I don't mean we wanted to excuse his mistakes or his faults, but we wanted to be inside of the character. For Christian Clavier, who plays Napoleon. Long live Bonaparte! The challenge lay in penetrating the facade. When you have all the power, you generally don't listen to anybody around you, so you're losing your the sense of reality. There is something about power that transforms human beings, and it's like a, a, they become addicted. Eventually, Napoleon grows into a sort of megalomaniac. It's a pity that such a great man should have such bad manners. Napoleon is a man of destiny. To say he's a hero would be wrong. Yes, I forgot. But to characterize him simply as a military dictator, repressive tyrant would be equally wrong. Bonaparte is in France. The screenplay, adapted from a book by Max Gallo, takes us inside the mind of one of the world's greatest generals. He wrote four books from Napoleon's perspective, all the time, using the eye as the point of view. Max Gallo imagined all the thinking of Napoleon during all his life. Don't ask me to answer for any blood that's shed. If I draw my sword, it will remain drawn until the order of the Republic is restored. What we discover is a Napoleon whose romantic conquests rivaled his military victories, and ultimately, a man who struggled with his love for one woman. My God, you're beautiful. As much as he strove to conquer Europe. It was a marriage of love, and it was a great passion, and we know that because all their correspondence has, has been kept, and the latter are full of passion. Actually, sometimes embarrassingly so, because they're full of sexual references. <laughs> you should read the letters he wrote to her when he was in Italy. Some of them are really like very bold letters, you know, very sexually oriented letters. You don't love him. I, I love his love for me. No one, not even you, has ever loved me like this. Do you know what passion is? Of course. It's... Uh, it's... Look no further. It's him. She taught 
him everything about sexuality, about sensuality. He really thought about her as this goddess. And who better to play a goddess than Isabella Rossellini? This script was particularly wonderful. Finding such an actress might have required hundreds of casting calls had Gerard Depardieu not had her number on speed dial. Hello. Gerard, yes, did you tell you what he told me? Can't be said. And I said, uh, I know you are very warm with a man, very hot. Do you want to be Josephine? <laughs> I said, oh, sure, yeah, yeah. I didn't believe it because I think you can look at Gerard and understand that he's an extraordinary person, but is he trustworthy? <laughs> and she said, ha, 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 yes. <laughs> As it turns out, Napoleon surrounded himself with advisors he shouldn't have trusted either. Stop me in the heart with this. It would be more loyal than anything you've done. Talleyrand, played by John Malkovich, with his signature snakiness, is Napoleon's most dangerous ally and Josephine's harshest critic. Talleyrand was a political genius. Talleyrand was a kind of the original French diplomat. He was uh, Napoleon's secretary of state for foreign affairs. Most people call me Talleyrand, just Talleyrand. Yes, like just God or Satan. He was very clever at finding a way to make people do what he wanted them to do. Talleyrand is a genius as a, as a foreign minister. Um, he generally gives Napoleon excellent advice, and he wants him to get rid of Josephine. Napoleon really loves Josephine, but he can't have an heir with her. She can't provide him what he needs politically. Since you seem to be saying my husband won't be back for Christmas, I shall join him in Poland. I shouldn't think that would be a terribly good idea, madam. And if you return from that journey sadder than when you departed, you'll have only yourself to blame. She's, in a way, Napoleon's sort of life support and consul. And of course, he wouldn't care for that terribly. And also, there's the question of the fact that she has, hasn't given Napoleon an heir. People always accuse me of wearing a mask to conceal my thoughts. And yet, the one time I'm completely candid, you appear not to have understood. But then, perhaps it's you who's wearing the mask. All you have to do is cross the line in a serious way, and Napoleon's trust is forever violated. Wherever you look, you see treason. But you betray France's interest by daring to propose such a treaty. It's meaningless rubbish, and that's what I do. It's rubbish. Very well, sir. I'll review the matter. No, no, I've lost my faith in you. From now on, I will deal directly with the Tsar, one on one. Very well, sir. Equally as duplicitous is Fouché, played by Gérard Depardieu. Fouché, I think, is on the dark side of the Napoleon rule because he's the one who's really enforcing the censorship of the press, the arrests of people before they commit the crimes. He's a pure product of the French Revolution. He is the ultimate policeman. Gather up the remains of the horse. The poor are begging for the meat, sir. It's not meat. It's evidence! Go! Napoleon enlists the aid of Fouché in his attempt to overthrow the French government. You will be my minister of police. That's very generous of you, but I am already minister of police. So if you have no other argument... I do have one, yes. I'm sure the royalists haven't forgotten how you slaughtered hundreds of their followers during the reign of terror. I heard you had them shot point blank after forcing them to dig their own graves. Napoleon requires absolute loyalty. You're either on his team or you're not. I think it are. No, right now, Fouché. With me or against me? All right, with you. While plotting a coup may have looked like serious business on screen, off screen, no one was keeping a straight face. Anytime Gerard's anywhere, it's completely fun and ridiculous. 
Usually at night when I got home, my ribs just felt like they'd been crushed with a baseball bat or something. I was just so sore from laughing because he's just such a gorilla and very smart and extremely childish. A Frenchman, an American, a gorilla, and a goddess. This all-star cast could have easily conquered Europe, but it takes more than that to conquer television. Action. Meet the other general. He's lovely. He's very calm, very well prepared, and very easy to be around. Yves Simon was the perfect director for this project for a number of reasons. He has an extraordinary visual eye. This is an incredible epic adventure of a story, and Eve was the perfect person, I think, to put this kind of spectacle on screen. From a purely practical standpoint, Eve also is bilingual. I think that the biggest question was for them to find somebody who could direct in French and in English. Calling the shots in two languages comes in handy when you're shooting all over the world. Yeah, I have a schedule that is around 130 days, something like that spread over seven countries. This production was given unprecedented access to locations where filming had never been permitted to take place before. This is the house of Talleyrand. Talleyrand, this is what we're shooting, is where the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who's played by John Malkovich, lived. We went from France to Czech Republic, to Austria, to Hungary, to St. Helena Island, to Morocco, back to the snow here in Canada. Originally, Napoleon's goals were to bring France back to its natural borders, but he couldn't stop. Here's a guy who kept traveling all the time. He couldn't stand still. Napoleon could look at a map and say, it's going to take me two days to move my men. He'd give the orders, and in two days, his men would be there. And no other general in any other country was able to do that. 200 years later, recreating Napoleon's most famous battles was no easy feat for the filmmakers. Can you put the people in position? For the stuntmen, I have uh, 35 stuntmen, Hungarians, and uh, 10 stuntmen French. With the uh, horses, it's 40 horses. These are horses who really know their paces. Every stunt that they do has been carefully thought through and choreographed, and the animals are exceptionally well trained to know exactly what to do on the moment and to do it impeccably. The main thing we had to do was a stirrup drag, a pretty straightforward stunt, but one of the most dangerous. You're tied to a horse that's galloping, going to a mark on his own. Uh, the danger in this is hitting something is always critical when you're doing stirrup drag. The crew may have suffered a few bruises. No animals were hurt in these stunts.